The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself, he is divided. He cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and blasphemies that are uttered will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. When Jesus makes an absolute statement like he has in this gospel passage, this should get our attention. In other words, what Jesus is saying is there's something here that is an absolute non-negotiable. Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never, those are very absolute words, never have forgiveness, but but is guilty of an everlasting sin. In other words, it's a sin that will never go away, which means there's only one place for such a person with a sin that will never go away. Anybody want to take a guess? It's, it's hot, and there's no relief to the flames, okay? And we can laugh a little bit, but this is a very, very serious passage. And it's one of those passages that makes people uncomfortable. No, he can't be that serious, really? No exceptions? No loopholes? Not what it says here. So let's talk a little bit about what this sin against the Holy Spirit is. First of all, does anybody know how the Holy Spirit is described in the creed? Think for a minute. The Lord, the giver of life. And so the Holy Spirit is God giving life. And so if you're against the Holy Spirit, then you're not interested in God or his life. And if you want to remain fixed in that, you're going to have a problem. First of all, you're going to find out that um, eternal life isn't a choice. Because God made us all to live forever. Where you spend eternal life is a choice, but eternal life isn't a choice. You're going to live forever. The location could be problematic, though. And so we have to be careful. So the sin against the Holy Spirit is unforgivable as St. Thomas Aquinas would say, it's unforgivable by its nature. In other words, in and of itself, it's not forgivable. The forgivable, why? Because the person who has that sin absolutely does not want to be forgiven. Father, how can you not want to be forgiven? Well, 
it becomes a refusal to accept salvation from God. I don't need God. I don't want him in my life. This is the person making absolute statements against God, and God respects that. You don't want me in your life? That's okay. That's your choice. Isn't that interesting? It's your choice. And so this is a refusal to accept salvation from God that is offered by the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord, the giver of life. I don't want him. Maybe you started out wanting him, but at some point you began to develop what we call a heart of unrepentance. So you started going on your own way and disregarding some of the commandments. And you're not sorry about that because you like the way things are going the way you want them. And you know what? I haven't seen any lightning come out of the sky to strike me dead, so I must be okay. I'm good. So I don't want God, and I don't need his forgiveness because I'm fine the way I am. So this, this refusal for repentance is actually a refusal of the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit that wants to inspire repentance in us so we can turn back to God. In other words, there's a little room to sin here, but you can't push away the invitation for reconciliation. You can't push away the Holy Spirit that says to you, you're out of line. You're not going to live. This is going to hurt you. So this non-repented person, they don't, they're not only just, they're not only not interested in forgiveness, they believe that they have a right to persist in evil. It's my right to choose, and I don't care what God says. I am going to do this. I am going to do what I want. That's a very hard and fast choice, where, where now the person is declaring a non-negotiable edict against God. I'm not budging on this. Wow. That sounds so horrifying to me. And so it's where I refuse to accept Jesus Christ's power to save me and to forgive all of my sins and to not only Jesus Christ's power to save me, but his, his gift of the offer of everlasting life, who has done that for me on the cross in unity with the Father's love and the Holy Spirit who is the author of life. I refuse to accept my need for salvation. I'm good. I don't need God. I can do this on my own. And I refuse to admit that there's a sin and that I'm sinning. I refuse to admit that that's a sin. I don't care what the Ten Commandments say. And so now I don't believe in the forgiveness of sins, which we say in the Creed. I believe in the forgiveness of sins, but now my life is becoming a whole fortress against all these things. I don't believe these things. And so gradually the person and their soul becomes cut off from receiving God's offer to save you. It can't be forgiven because basically you've created an atmosphere in your soul that says, I don't want it. And that becomes cemented, and that final hardening happens at the time of death. And then there's no turning back. It's horrifying, isn't it? I'm not saying this to scare you, although if it makes you nervous, that's good. Okay. It's, it's, this is truth and reality that we need to know. In other words, you can choose against God if you want. You're free to do that. But there is going to be 
a reality of the consequences of that. This is what we say in the creed. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection and the life of the, the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that this is given to us. And when we refuse this offer, then there's nothing left. This gospel passage is given then, and this statement is made by Jesus to tell the Pharisees that there's still time for you. You can turn away from this, and you can be embraced by the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit. That choice is yours. It's up to you, and nobody can do it for you. And so here we are. I ask the question then, how serious are you about believing in the forgiveness of sins and looking forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come? And if you are serious, we need to be serious enough that we're willing to dismiss anything in our life that compromises this. At the very least, to begin working at it with a deeper life of holiness. Regina Jenny, let her